Gospel of Luke. We've actually been in the Gospel of Luke for a couple of years now, and we have made our way to Luke chapter 18, verses 31 through 34. How appropriate that God knew that today would be uh, when we share God's, uh, our stories for God's glory, and that this uh, passage would be so very appropriate for all of us. Because there are lots of times, don't you know this, that there are lots of times, lots of things that happen to us in our lives that we don't understand at the time why it's going on? Family difficulties, illnesses, financial challenges. We just don't know why things are happening. And when we're honest with God in our prayer life, we say, why, God? Why? Right? Even... If God could come in the form of a human being and talk to us straight on in plain English to answer our question, I'm convinced that there are times when we wouldn't understand what he says to us because we just don't understand. That's why I think God gave us this passage today. Because Jesus here tells his disciples precisely what's about to happen. Now, we struggle with this because we have the advantage of history. We can look back. We know how the Gospels ended up. We know what's coming. But if you're one of the disciples at this time, and Jesus says, hey, I'm God, I'm the Son of God, but I'm about to be killed... Wait, no, that doesn't compute, right? I don't get that. I don't understand that. They didn't understand. So today, I'd like to say, hey, you know, there's lots of times when we go through things that we don't understand. So what do we do when we don't understand? Very quickly today, eight things that we can do that we can understand when we don't understand. And here's the first thing that you can understand when you don't understand Understand that I won't always understand. (laughs) Hey, that's a relief, isn't it? It's okay. There are times when I won't always understand. The disciples, uh, verse 34, the disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. We're not going to understand sometimes either. Now, it may be that God actually hides The impact of understanding. It could be. I mean, that could have been what happened here with the disciples. Maybe they weren't ready for it yet. Maybe we're not ready for it. You know, some people think they want to know their future. I'm not sure that's true. I think there are times when God very mercifully hides the meaning of what's going on because we're not ready for it yet. That certainly may have been the case with the disciples. But it also may be that our brains just can't comprehend God's ways. We read in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. If, if there are times when you can't understand what God is thinking in a particular situation, it may just be that you're not ready for it yet, or it may be that you just really can't understand because, let's face it, God's got a bigger brain than we do, all right? So when we get to that point where we don't understand either something that God has said to us or we don't understand a situation that we're in, what can we understand? And actually, the, the next seven things we're going to look at very quickly are what we can understand when we don't understand. All right? So here we go. Number two, understand this, that God's love never fails. You never have to worry about that. Even when you don't understand, you can understand this, that God's love never fails. Lamentations three twenty two to 24. Boy, are you getting the benefit of the whole Scripture today. When's the last time you were in church and somebody read from Lamentations? Here you go today, all right? Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. 
Therefore, I will wait for him. No matter what comes our way, whether we understand it or not, we never have to wonder about whether or not God loves us. There are new opportunities every day to experience God's love, every day, no matter what we're going through. If we will allow God to express his love to us and we will allow ourselves to experience it, we will feel God's love anew every day. But even if you don't feel it, you can know it. Did you know that? You can know something that you don't necessarily feel. Some of us go by feeling so much that when we don't feel something, we think it's not there. You need to understand, know that God's love is real and new every morning, whether you feel it or not. Sometimes, like this passage says, sometimes we just have to say, God, you are my portion. You know what that means? It means, God, I know that you can handle whatever it is I'm going through, even if I can't handle it, even if I don't get it, even if I don't understand what's happening to me, I can know this, God, you love me, and your love is good enough for me. So I'm just going to wait. What we heard from Dave about Dave and Jenny for the last five months is a lot of waiting, right? And we get tired of waiting, but sometimes that's all we can do. Just tie a knot at the end of that rope and wait. Know that God loves me and wait. The psalmist puts it this way, praise the Lord. He is good. God's love never fails. Sometimes we wonder not only why, but how is something good that clearly is bad that we're going through? How can this be good? How can it be coming from a good God? We, you know, there are times when we confuse the lousy circumstances that we're in with the goodness of God. I remind you all the time that this is not heaven, this is earth. The difference is that in heaven, God's will is always done. In earth, God's will is not always done. This is not where God's will is always done. And sometimes what happens to us, I know this is a mind stretcher, but sometimes what happens to us is not even what God wants to happen to us. And that leads us to number three here, that we always need to understand that what I'm going through actually could be an attack of Satan, could be an attack of the evil one, could be an attack of the devil. Peter was no stranger to this. In 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, he says this, gives this advice to us. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, did you know you have an enemy? Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Now, not every bad thing that happens to us is the devil working. Now, sometimes bad things do happen to us, as we'll see in a moment, because God needs us to go through some things to mature us. I'm convinced that more times than not, the bad things that happen to us, all we really do is need to look in a mirror. <laughs> we cause more of our own problems than anybody else does for us. But if you're a Christ follower, and especially if you're effective as a disciple, doing God's good will here on this earth, in this rotten world, then you just need to know that part of the deal is satanic attacks. I cannot expect to be a pastor and stand in front of you and lead you faithfully without at the same time expecting Satan to work against me. And that happens sometimes. That's part of the process. This is not heaven yet, still earth. Peter, God bless Peter, he knew the reality of this more than most. That's why he says resist. You gotta resist. That feeling of resistance never goes away for a Christ follower. In fact, I would say this, if you're not feeling the struggle of needing to resist the temptations of life, to resist the satanic attacks in your life, if you don't feel the need for that resistance, I would say maybe you're just kind of floating. Maybe you're not being real effective. Maybe Satan doesn't have to attack you because there's not much going on in your life. Maybe you just are kind of just out there going with the flow. So 
Maybe, just maybe, when you're going through a difficult time, it could be a satanic attack. Or number four, understand this, it could very well be too that God is testing your faith. This happens. It's not me telling you this. Again, we turn to Peter. Peter went through all of these, right? 1 Peter 1, 7, now for a little while, you may have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come, and here he tells you why. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith. In other words, your faith has been proved by how you have gotten through the difficult suffering that you're going through. In fact, the verse goes on to say that this um, proven genuineness of your faith results in praise and honor and glory when Jesus is revealed. So it is true that God sometimes does allow bad things to happen to good people. That's why, by the way, we can't always just take away whatever somebody's going through. I can't begin to explain why some of you are going through the things that you're going through, but I do believe this with all of my heart, that God can use and will use what you're going through to improve your faith if you will let him. That you will come out of it on the other end as a stronger, more faithful, more effective Christ follower. And by the way, as far as this proven genuineness of your faith, don't get the idea at all that God is wondering if you're going to be faithful. He already knows the answer to that. Who needs to know the proven genuineness of our faith? We do. God already knows. He knows things about you that you don't know yet. He knows your heart better than what you know your heart. When you come through a time of testing and difficulty and you come out the other end of it faithful, even if you've stumbled a little bit along the way, you will know that your faith is genuine. Faith sometimes has to be proven even to us. Now, when you're going through a difficult time, you need to know this too. Number five, understand that it's okay to ask God why. It's okay to ask God why. God can handle your questions. God has the world's biggest shoulders. God is a big God. Now, what you have to understand is, is that he doesn't always promise an answer, at least not the answer that you're ready for, not always the answer that you and I want. But when we go to God with our why is this happening question, he does promise this. He promised to lessen our anxiety. And some of us get anxious when we're going through a tough time, right? What does uh, Paul say in Philippians? We have the benefit of the writer of Lamentations, the benefit of Peter, the benefit of Paul here. Paul went through a lot of difficult times. And what does he say in Philippians 4, 6? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Did you notice that this verse, which many of you have memorized, says in every situation? Well, if that's true, in every situation, what does that include? That includes situations when you don't understand. That includes situations where you have big why questions. But going to him will reduce that anxiety from not understanding. In fact, Paul gives us an example. I don't know how many of you are remembering this or aware of this, but he writes to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians 12, 8. He says, three times, he counted them, by the way, three times, I pleaded, not just asked. I mean, get what pleading is? Pleading is, I'm really effective for you. I'm starting new churches for you. I'm writing a lot of the New Testament for you, Okay. Help me with this. I mean, if there's any guy on planet Earth at this moment who really needs God's answer in an affirmative way, it's Paul. He says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. He was experiencing some kind of horrible pain in his side, and he didn't know why. And it was really hurting him. And the answer that he was looking for was, God, just take it away. Just touch me. You do this for everybody else through me. Can I have just a little bit of that power that you do through me? Can I just move? And it's gone? God didn't answer that in that way. He wanted God to take it away, but that was not the answer he got. Which leads us to number six. 
understand that God's answer may not be what I expect. When I don't understand what God is saying, understand that's okay. I may not understand why, and I may not also get the answer that I expect. What was the answer that Paul got? We're fortunate that he wrote this down. Take a look at 2 Corinthians 12, 9. What is it he said? But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Wow. Consider how important this particular passage is for our faith. How many times over the last 2,000 years this has been preached? God's power, our weakness. God's power made perfect in our weakness. I mean, that's, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. But do you understand that Paul would never, ever have written that down if he had got the answer that he wanted? If God had simply touched him and taken the pain away, pain just removed completely, then he never would have written this down, and we wouldn't have it today. You see, God had a plan for Paul's suffering. And I'm here to tell you today, no matter what it is that you're going through, God has a plan for your suffering and can make good come out of it even when you don't understand. Some of you said that today. I don't understand why I'm going through this. Or in Aaron's case, I didn't understand why I was going through this. But I can tell you that God had a plan for me and that God provided for me. That leads us to number seven. The seventh thing that we can understand when we don't understand. Understand that God's peace is better than my understanding. Always. God's peace is always better than my understanding. Again, we come back to Paul. Here's what Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, what? Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now looked at in the light of our topic today, with many of you sharing your story for God's glory, Understanding, if we could understand what we're going through, understanding would be great. But I'm here to tell you and to promise you that God's peace is better than your understanding. While understanding is not always promised, God's peace is always promised to us. God's peace provides a guard at the door of our minds, at the door of our hearts, that we don't have to live in the shadow of, Oh, here's a new word for Mark. We don't have to live in the shadow of ununderstanding. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't understand. That's called ununderstanding. Knowing what God's will is for us, knowing what God is doing for us. But we can know that God never leaves us. We can know that his love never fails. And one more thing that he promises us, this brings us to number eight, and we'll wrap it up here. We can understand this, that God will restore me, that God will restore you. Some of you are going through such difficulties right now in relationships or physical challenges or financial challenges that it's impossible for you to see how God's going to restore you. But here's what Peter said. We come back to Peter. If anybody understands about restoring, it was Peter, right? Here's what Peter says. And the God of all grace, God invented grace. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you. You might want to underline that. The God of all grace will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Again, this comes from Peter, who went through more than his share of not understanding what was going on. Even oh, We love reading Peter's stories, right? Because Peter just over and over again kind of blew it. There was a time when Peter was trying to defend Jesus, and Jesus had to say, get out of my way, Satan. Oh, my goodness. I mean, Peter clearly didn't know what was happening. He didn't understand. When Jesus was taken in for questioning the night of his betrayal and didn't own up to even knowing Jesus to a little girl at the fireside. Later, he couldn't understand how Christianity could be more inclusive than just for the Hebrew faith. 
And it took a centurion and Paul and a few sleepless dreams for God to ultimately get through to Peter so that he could understand. But Peter did know restoration. He did know that Jesus always brought him back. He knew that Jesus was always faithful even when he was not. So likewise, we should remember that this restoration is promised to us. By the way, that restoration may be in the next life. It may not be in this life. But there are many promises. Peter himself ended up being crucified upside down because suffering a martyr's death because he didn't feel like he was worthy of being crucified in the regular way. But he had no doubts of God's restoration. So this morning, we are not promised understanding. Many times we're going to go through times where we just don't understand. But these eight things can always help us, even when we don't understand. I, I encourage you to take the sermon notes today, the fill in the blanks, break it off, and post it where you can see it this week. Put it up on your refrigerator or put it on your mirror when you're getting ready in the morning. Be reminded of these powerful promises of God of how he is going to be there, how our good, good Father loves us even when we don't understand.